the Sexual Reproductive Health Rights Defenders Program has been a stepping stone to a lot of initiatives that has happened within our communities and also within our environment that we live in. It has groomed strong, confident, powerful women who are able to, to go through beyond the issues of just reproductive health rights, but also to go through the issues of into issues of national policy, issues of politics, issues of um, social and economic development, issues of entrepreneurship. It has also been able to develop us as females, to be able to lie us and understand and understand that um, gender equality is not just about being 50-50 with a man, but it's about equal access to opportunities, resources, and um, opportunities that are, arise within our communities. Uh, young women in Zimbabwe remain a key um, group of people, rather a key population with special needs and special focus because of the number of challenges that they continue to face. Particularly in relation to sexual and reproductive health, young women continue to bear the brunt the most. They are faced with uh, higher incidences and prevalence rates around HIV and AIDS, uh, STI infections, unplanned or unwanted pregnancies, um, unsafe abortions, among and even access to contraception, among other challenges that come with um, the sexual and reproductive health needs. I realize that the current situation we have in our country uh, continues to put uh, uh, the female students enrolled in these different institutions in difficult situations because some of them cannot uh, afford to sustain their actual their own living and uh, within these campuses and furthermore our colleges um, do not have the adequate resources to support the female students in ensuring that their social welfare their health issues um, continue to be uplifted continue to be prioritized by the by the colleges as well as the nation so you find that these issues continue to uh, perpetuate more challenges for the young women. There's need for every investment to go in supporting young women's activities and their leadership. The boys used to take advantage of them, forcing them to have unprotected sex just because they did not have the knowledge on how to protect themselves and as well as to say no to, to unprotected sex. We have seen so many changes. Girls now have the courage to say no to unprotected sex and we now have the courage um, to use the female condom. Right now, young women, I think, um they are in the forefront when it comes to sexual and reproductive health uh, because they are now being able to advocate for what they need as students. Say what envisions a society, rather societies that have young people, particularly students, who fully enjoy their sexual and reproductive health rights um, in Zimbabwe as well as the Southern African region. These young women were working um, towards defending the female student sexual and reproductive health rights. We then carried them a training which saw them being capacitated in different aspects to include leadership, to include uh, issues on sexual and reproductive health. The training really helped us a lot, especially in terms of uh, building our confidence as young women. We're able to stand up and really speak about our rights and take grip of our um, and communicate whatever we would really want to achieve. Um, secondly, the training really helped us um, to become better leaders. I, through the leadership uh, training skills session we, we went through, um, and this in turn um, helped us as we were doing our projects, our various projects our, at our institutions as the defenders. Um, we managed to do the cancer campaign project, uh, the condomized project, and also um, the sanitary way project. And I'm really happy to say that this has been achieved. If we need initiatives to work better for young women, we need to build on their capacity. And building on their capacity, it means empowering them or strengthening them to be better, uh, better placed in the society. We support the work of women's rights organizations through capacity building and the provision of information. We believe strongly in building the leadership of women's rights organizations, and particularly young women. As a feminist grant making foundation, and a strong believer in the promotion and sustenance of women's rights in Africa. We believe that investing 
in young women's activity and their leadership is paramount. We believe that young women represent the next generation leaders of our continent. One of the key initiatives that I managed to initiate at my college at CAT is opening an information center. Uh, it is going to be officially opened uh, probably by the end of April and also uh, initiating um, a, sexual, a web for life group for young ladies where they meet and discuss issues that affect young ladies uh, at, their, at our teacher institution. The young women not only have taken up leadership positions within their communities or societies, but they have also taken an initiative to spearhead some of the activities and to talk further about the challenges that young women are facing. But child marriages, sexual harassment, we find that these are some of the critical challenges faced by our young women within our communities. And part of Sewa work is to be able to mobilize communities to come together and recognize the need to support um, young women or young people, young girls within their communities and find one voice to speak against abusive behaviors young, um, 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 against girls and also be able to have collective action in order to empower communities to have sustainable structures. The other issue that we worked on as reproductive health defenders was on trying to find out how child marriages in Zimbabwe are affecting young girls. And during the Southern African Regional Students and Youth Conference, which was held in August in Harare, we were able to have reproductive health defenders be part of the conference and also contribute to the space. We not only had reproductive health defenders, but we had young women from around the region. We had young women from Africa to also contribute in, the, in these spaces. We had former child brides. We had child brides who spoke to their issue. They, there was really contradiction in the laws, and it is it is happy news to say now that we have a constitutional court ruling which has ruled Section 22 of the Marriages Act as um, Ultraverse, the, con the constitution of Zimbabwe. And we are looking forward and we are hoping that there will be harmonization of, of our laws. Say what prioritizes advocacy. Because without advocacy, we might not be able to fight as a generation for our needs and our, our, some of the things that our society continues to believe that it's a priority, it's a privilege for the young women. Sexual harassment is one of the challenges that young women at tertiary institutions were facing. And as one of our advocacy issues, we managed to engage the local, the college authorities again to come up with um, sexual harassment policies that protect young women who are being harassed by either fellow students or the lecturers. Now I'm really excited to say that many colleges have implemented their sexual harassment policies and some of the colleges have also amended some of the sexual harassment policies which had some loopholes. We were able to submit a draft sexual harassment policy to the University of Zimbabwe. At national and regional level, advocacy was being conducted through their participation in platforms where sexual and productive health rights uh, matters were being discussed. Young women were also able to flag out their issues and this also influenced the ultimate uh, outcomes of some of the platforms. Um, reproductive health rights defenders also got an opportunity even to join other young women out there, other young women movements, whereby they were participating, networking, and also sharing their uh, information with other young women and also taping uh, lessons learned with, with which they went back and implement within their own colleges. My participation was very enlightening. I learned a lot. I learned a lot of HR, HR challenges that we also face in Zimbabwe that are also being faced with other Southern African regional countries. And we learned a lot, gave us recommendations and uh, for feelings. Um, I'm very excited and happy and I'm just proud that I was able to represent uh, my school but mostly my country. One of the platforms that I was involved in was um, ICASA which was held in Zimbabwe in November, December 2015. This was 
For me, it was a life-changing platform because I got to witness and I got to be part of and I got to be involved with young people from, from, from Africa and also to get to hear their voices and to get to hear what they are doing to contribute in spaces and also to contribute in their thoughts being heard, to contribute in the development of Africa. I personally did a project on contraception with particular focus on the female condom uptake, how they can be able to, to negotiate for safer sex since the female, through the female condom it's the woman who gets to wear it and hence it gives her power to negotiate. We are trying by all means to encourage women through the MSU clinic which is in Shishani so that they come for contraceptives, condoms and all. We managed to build incinerators around the female complexes which help to, to improve the hygiene around the campus. The issue of disposing the sanitary way, the incinerators in most of the toilets are down, the systems are down, so we have facilitated for paraffin to be bought so that the sanitary way can be disposed of well and healthily so that everyone lives in a clean environment. We have also managed to make sure that uh, con contraceptive pills are also available at our clinic because we have seen that many of those young ladies, as much as you want you, as much as we tell them to abstain, they really don't do that. So we have managed to advocate for the empowerment of young ladies on campus by encouraging them to partake female condoms as part of their protection and also we have managed to provide counselling for them. Another project that we embarked on was working with an orphanage called um, Tariro Hope for Children. This, this um, orphanage is based in Epworth. We work mostly with young, with young girls. Women, they have to have the power and the guts to say no to things that they don't want. Say what actually um, would like to ensure and contribute to a society or a, a nation and a world where women, particularly young women, are empowered and have the ability or the capacity to fight and defend their rights as individuals, to be recognized within the society and to address all gender disparities that continue to impede our society and communities. We all know that a lot of our young women continue to exist in highly patriarchal society where they continue to, they need to continue to fight for their rights and defend their rights as individuals.